All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to take a look at this Tessman. It is a TM510 multimeter. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive multimeter, and it does have some limited functionality, but it's small, it's lightweight, it appears to have good battery life, and it's something you can chuck into your pocket or toolbox. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get too far along in this uh, this video, I wanted to mention that I was contacted by the fine folks at Tessman, and they asked if I would review this multimeter for them. I like multimeters, and I like making videos, so they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Let's take a look and see what's inside. So when you open it up, there is a nice carrying case for your Tessman multimeter. Oh, look at that, we got a user guide in there. I like user guides, and we'll take a look at that in this video. Here's the Tessman multimeter itself, packaged in some protective plastic. It comes with two Duracell uh, AAA batteries, which is a handy thing. And then it comes with these multimeter probes. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start measuring. Now, when I put the batteries in, this came on uh, automatically, and, and uh, I hit this button and nothing happened, but the power button's a long press power button, so there you go. Let's take the probes. The probes come with these protective caps in them, um, which I guess is nice. And then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect those to the multimeter. We wanna make sure that they're firmly seated so we can get a nice reading. Now, what I wanna talk a little bit about uh, this meter is, is that it is auto ranging and it also is auto mode. So when you hook it up, it detects what you're attempting to measure and then it will go ahead and make that selection for you. Now, auto ranging, let me grab another multimeter and I'll talk about it real quick. This is a manually ranging multimeter and depending upon the measurements that I'm going to do, I have to pick the range for which I want to test. So for example, for DC voltage, if I was measuring in the millivolts range, I would pick one of these. If I was measuring 20 volts and under, I'd pick this, 200 or 100. This being an auto ranging and auto mode takes some of the guesswork out of it. Um, but what you need to be careful of is, is that if you need to have the guesswork taken out of, you probably need some help interpreting results as well. All right, so what we have here is a AC outlet, and uh, this outlet is plugged into the wall, so it's hot. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually test the non-contact voltage, and I get there by pushing this button uh, for a long period of time. And then when I come over here, you can see this registering H for hot, so that tells me that this is live and I have voltage here. Now, one of the things that uh, I want to talk about in terms of non-contact voltage that applies to all multimeters is, is that if it detects the voltage, there we go. That means there's voltage there. That means there's current there. That means that uh, you want to be careful. If it doesn't, it doesn't mean that there isn't voltage there. It just means it's not detecting it. So let's get out of non-contact voltage mode, and we're going to go through each one of the things that we can measure. Um, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to stick these things in here, and I know that that's not entirely safe. And I want to see if we can get a reading. So let's do that. Oops, got some glare. Let me see if I can stir these things around a little bit and then get some sort of reading. These probes are, there we go. Oh, I almost had something. These probes are a little bit short. Short. Um, so what was happening is I was having some trouble getting these probe tips to make contact inside the housing for this uh, extension cord. So what we have, everything is hooked up here. And this is from a project where I did something else exposing the, the hot ends of uh, the cords a little bit. Don't do this. This is not safe. But uh, when I go ahead, I go ahead and put this in here. Uh, here we are, and we're getting a reading of 120.34 volts, which is exactly what we should be seeing. So it does measure AC voltage accurately. All right, the next function on the multimeter that we want to test is measuring DC voltage. So I have my Ampere Time uh, 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that I use for a lot of my bench tests here on the bench. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to stick these probes into these Anderson power poles and we should get a reading. 13.41 and that's exactly what we should be getting there. Um, it auto detected that and then it ranged that relatively quickly. And so here is a just a small energizer battery. And then you can do the same thing with this. And then this is telling me this battery is one, one point something volts, one, one six, one five. Um, there you go. So it'll test uh, DC voltage as well as AC voltage. 
Okay, going down our list, the next thing that we're going to measure is ohmic resistance. And here we have some 33,000 <laughs> ohms uh, on these uh, resistors. And so let's go ahead and measure that. And then there you see 33 kilo ohms, and uh, that is exactly what we should be seeing. Now, one of the things that we're going to get to, and we talk about some limitations of this when we go through the instruction manual, this is a 20 ohm resistor. And when I go ahead and I measure this, it's going into a continuity mode, and it's not exactly reading the uh, resistor. So it's saying it's 15 uh, ohms. It's close enough. I'm not worked up about that or not. But uh, what I worry about is sometimes it goes into continuity mode, and then it doesn't tell you the value of uh, the resistor. These are 10 ohm resistors and uh, it's reading these a little bit light as well. So it's the meter starts to struggle when it's measuring things below 50 ohms of resistance. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the continuity mode and that tells you when you have an electrical connection through a particular medium. So one of the ways that you can test this is just touch your probe tips together. Now that took a little bit longer than I'm used to seeing but it's saying that I have connectivity between the two tips of the probes. So let's take a look at something a little bit more practical. So for example, this is a piece of coaxial cable that I use in measurements all the time. And let's say I want to do and see if there's continuity along the shield of the coaxial cable. And you do that by measuring the outer portion. And there you go. And we're going to test to see if there's continuity along the shield by touching the outer portion of the SMA connectors. And you can see that it tests continuity reasonably well. It takes a little while for it to make that connection, but uh, it tests it. And I think that covers all the different functions that we have here. Let's uh, take one quick look. There is a backlight option that you can uh, turn on with a quick press of this button. And then if I push it again, the flashlight comes on. So that's handy. Notice there is no stand to put this up. So this meter will lay flat when you're using it. All right, let's, uh, let's open this baby up and see what's going on inside. Again, we have to take off the protective sleeve. And then we have four Phillips head screws that we need to take off here. All right, so just a couple things to look at. Here are the contacts for your batteries, and they connect here to these springs to power the actual unit up. Uh, these are our ports for connecting our probes, and uh, these are a little bit thinner material, a little bit thinner metal, but I think that these would be just fine. And notice that they're split ring in case they need to expand or contract. Now, typically on a multimeter, you would see some sort of input protection. Uh, here we have some resistors um, and probably some capacitors. I'm not sure what they are. They're too small for me to tell. In line, uh, typically you would have a fuse or something like that in here. Uh, I'm not sure what the requirements are to get something rated at 600 volts, but um, which this meter is rated for. But I, I don't think I would be testing any high energy circuits with this, given that there is really no input protection here at all. A um, little bit concerning, here's the processor, the central processing unit of the device. It's very typical to see these with a blob of insulation on there, and you can't tell what they are. Um, here are your connections into your LCD display control. Um, I think when you say LCD display, I'm saying display twice. Uh, here is the LED light that uh, you would use for the flashlight on the back of the device. Here is your sound, this piezo speaker here. And uh, this is really a basic multimeter, so there's not a whole lot in there. This is really it. Let me go ahead and uh, put this back together, and uh, we'll do a couple more things. All right, let's take a quick look at the instruction manual. So looking at it, you can see that this is a true RMS multimeter at 4,000 counts. Most multimeters that you get these days are true RMS. So getting that in a multimeter at this price point is pretty handy. Let's go ahead and see what we have in here. Looks like we have a couple of QR codes if you wanted to look at their YouTube channel, Facebook, or maybe even their website. And it looks like it's in English and non-English. I'm not sure what that, uh, what's, what language that is. It says it's covered under a three-year warranty. Um, here's a meter diagram that goes all over all the buttons and functions, which is pretty handy. And then here is what each button does in a little bit of detail. Uh, it does have a power button. It says long press to turn on or off meter. Let's take a quick look at that. There we go. Talks about the backlight functionality. And then here's some specifications on it. 
Um, it says that it is CAT 600 volt rated. I'm not sure if that's a legitimate rating or not. Based off of what we saw inside this meter when we did the teardown, I would say that I doubt that. Um, it has a less than 2,000 meters altitude and pollution level. I'm not sure I've ever seen those ratings on a multimeter before, but maybe I have. Talks a little bit about some storage stuff, but that's okay. Um, on off, low battery indication, which is nice. It has a data hold feature. So if you're measuring something, you can press and hold this button to hold that data. Let's see what else we have. Um, it talks about some smart measurements, and we, we covered that in the, in the review portion of it. So here's where you talk about accuracy and in different ranges, 4 volt, 40, 400, and 600. It says here that the resolution was in 1 volt. And then its accuracy is 1.0% uh, plus 5. And that means the last significant digit can fluctuate within 5. So for example, if you got a measurement that said 12.10 volts, um, that could be off by 1% as well as it could be 12.05 or 12.15 volts, according to that. Uh, that's DC voltage, and it looks like it's 1.2% and, and plus or 5 for AC voltage. Now, down here it says overload protection, maximum voltage 600 volt, and frequency response is 40 hertz to 1 kilohertz for true RMS. And then here is measuring resistance. It says... Again, overload protection kicks in at 250 volts, uh, but this would be your resolution all the way up to 40 mega ohms, which isn't too bad. And then your accuracy over there is 1.2 plus 5. Now, uh, one thing that's interesting is it says the continuity test is less than 50 ohms. So if you're going to measure resistors that are, say, 20 ohm resistors, uh, or if you're going to measure something that's 49 ohms, you might get a continuity test as opposed to a resistance measurement. Uh, cleaning, disposal, and recycle. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna worry about any of that too much. And then here is the non-English portion of the instruction manual. All right, folks. So when you take a look at it, what we have here is a relatively inexpensive multimeter that does have some limited capability in terms of what it can and cannot measure. I think that's to be expected when you start looking at a multimeter in the sub ten dollar uh, range. Uh, it does come with probes. It comes with carrying case. Comes with batteries. All those things are nice, and it's a, it's a nice add-on here. If you're looking for something like this, uh, you can go ahead and give it a try using the discount code below. Uh, I think it'll get you 10% off, so it takes it down to about $8.99. But, um, you know, what, I don't have much other to say than it's just a small, basic multimeter. Um, fits nice in your pocket, and that's going to do it. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Big thanks to Tessman for sending this to me for my consideration.